We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. We're learning. Immediately. Today we're going to start Lamedalad Amad Aleph, the last line. Rabba Amar. Rabba Amar, we're in this uh, uh, big sugya about Kamle B'd Rabba Minei. And it, it's, uh, it all started with a contradiction between our Mishnah here, which says that a girl that's either raped or seduced gets a knas, even if she's a close relative, she, the father gets the knas. And uh, a Mishnah in Makas that says that uh, a woman that's raped or seduced, the, the, the um, perpetrator gets Malkus. Problem is, come like the Ramani, you can't have to pay, and also, um, and, and you can't get Malkus and also pay. So we gave one answer from Ula. Ula said it depends on her age. Um, Rabbi Yechelen said it depends if, they, if he was warned. If he was warned, then there's only Malchus. We learned Rish Lakish says that it's actually the opinion of Rabbi Meir that says, like in a Mishalman. Oh, now this creates a whole, a whole problem because according to according to um, the mayor that says, like in a Mishalman, what's going to be about, like in a Mishalman means you get Malkus and you also have to pay. It means there's no rule of Kamleb Deramine. Every single punishment that the person is deserving, he gets. So that would mean, though, that he should also have to pay even if he gets deserving of the death penalty. Or maybe yes, maybe no. But, but the problem is we have a Mishnah that says that a woman, uh, 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 his daughter, He's exempt from paying if he if he rapes his daughter because that's a case of a death penalty. So that becomes problematic. We say maybe a mayor doesn't hold uh, that that nisa mishalim. Maybe only holds like in a mishalim. So one second, we have a mishnah that talks about or a brisa that talks about uh, if someone checks on Shabbos. Over there, a mayor says he's potter. He's putter from paying because of the death penalty. That's what we think. Lacham say, uh, Rameer says that he's chayev. He's chayev. And Lacham says he's putter. He's chayev even though there's a death penalty. And Lacham says he's putter because of the death penalty. So we answered that Rameer, that that case was talking about, we are the person that shechted was not the person that stole it. And therefore, it was tevech al yideyachar. And therefore, the one that gets the death penalty is the sheikhet, because he's shechting on Shabbos. And the one that has the payment of the four or five, five times, that's the one that stole it. It was a different person. Then we went through a whole thing, but how, why did the Chum say Pater? Maise Shabbos, is it a real shechita? Okay. Well, Rabbah Meloylem B'Tevech that's the That's the introduction to the bottom line. <laughs> Rabbi says that we're actually talking about where he's slaughtering it himself. Slaughtering himself, then, according to Rabbi Meir, obviously is going to be Chayev, even because Misa Umashalim, that there is a death penalty and he also has to pay. And, but, and the Chachamim are going to say that he's Pater because Kamle Bdramine. But Rabbi Meir, like Umashalim, is like Mesa Mashalim, less like. The problem is, the problem is, is that all of this will not fit with our Mishnah. The, the, it's not, we didn't have the Mishnah yet, but the uh, Mishnah in Masech Ksubis that says that if someone lives with his daughter, he's exempt. If you want to tell me that our Mishnah that says that he has to pay, even though it, there's the Isra Karis, he's living with his sister, or his uncle, his, his aunt, his uncle's wife, or whatever. Um, if you want to tell me that's the opinion of Rabbi Meir that says that there's Karis or Malkus and he still has to pay, so what are you going to do with the, with the, he lives with his daughter that he's exempt from paying? How are you going to resolve that? So we're going to have to say that by Misa, by death, you don't have to pay. Okay, fine. Now, once you say that, now you have to go back to the case of Shabbos, where he shechts on Shabbos, and over there he does have to pay, even though it's the, it's the same person, according to this, the same person that's shechting is the one that has to pay the fine of four or five times. 
So the Gemara says that why over there does he have to pay? Um, so Mason Mishalim uh, Leslie, if there's a death penalty, then he doesn't have to pay. So then why on Shabbos does he have to pay? What well, the death penalty is referring to the daughter. He lives with his daughter where there's a death penalty. He doesn't have to pay the fine. So our Mishnah fits. Problem is the Mishnah that said that if he shechs on Shabbos, he's chayiv. That doesn't fit. So Shani Hani, the Chiddushu Shechid Shater Beknas. I forgot the Miktal Mishalim. By a Knas, he has to pay. One second. The daughter is also a Knas. A Knas means a fine. What is the, what's the concept of the fine? The fine is that even if everything else, or even if all other reasons tell us that he should be exempt, but the fine is still there. The knas. We still give him the knas. So the, uh, the, uh, the logic over here is that in a regular court case, this would be exempt. If it would just be a monetary issue, he would, he would be exempt. But the fine tells us that he's high. So it, we still have a question. Rashi says the Gemara later on is going to ask that. Kasha Bita, uh, because the daughter is also a knas. Yeah. So basically, what we said is really should be exempt from from paying because there's a death penalty. We're talking about on Shabbos. It should be exempt from paying, but we have the four and five times an obligation to pay for the animal either if it's a sheep or if it's for four times, if it's for an ox, if it's a sheep, yeah, if it's a sheep, then it's four times. If it's an ox, then it's five times. So then why is he hive to pay? Because that's a knas. But us the Rava, it's Rava. There's a big discussion over here and then it has to be Rava, not Rava. Us the Rava, it's Hamei. Rava follows his reasoning. The Rava, how you get the gun of life with Tavachai B'Shabbos is chayev shekvan is chayev b'gnei v'kenim shev v'deyis v'shabbos. We didn't, um, we, we didn't make this distinction when we learned this yesterday. But it turns out, according to Rabbah, that there's a big difference here, according to Rabbah, between when the animal was stolen and when it was shechted. If it was stolen on a weekday, that means that he has an obligation already to pay for the animal. And then when he, when he uh, slaughters it, on Shabbos, then he has only the fine to pay on Shabbos. The, the, the fine is coming in on Shabbos. The obligation to pay once was on the weekday. The obligation to pay the four or five times, but now it's three or four times, is coming on Shabbos. Because he slaughtered it on Shabbos. Oh, so he still is during the week. Slaughtered, and that's when he has to pay the fine. Right. Oh. So now, then you kill him. so, well, when he slaughters it, he's high of Misa. The problem is, uh, let's read it again. The gedi, the kid, the goat, was already stolen by during the weekday. And on Shabbos is when he did the, the shechita. Well, in that case, he's going to be chayev. Chayev what? Chayev dalad vehe. Four or five times. He has to pay. Why? Because the, the monetary part of this, which is the restitution, right? He has to pay back that, that amount of that amount that, uh, of that the value of that animal, that he had to pay on a weekday. That that was an obligation a weekday obligation. And over there there was no death penalty. So that obligation exists. What obligation kicks in on Shabbos? Only the fine. And now a fine together with a death penalty he has to pay. Remember we said that a death penalty takes away the monetary obligation, but not the obligation of a fine, of a knas. So here, because the only obligation that comes on Shabbos is the knas, not the monetary obligation, because he stole it on a weekday. So the obligation to, to the restitution is is chayev for sure because that was a weekday in the knas is chayev even though there's a there's a chayev misa. Let's go further. Gonna v'tavach b'shabbos. Let's say he stole it and he slaughtered it on Shabbos. Now you'll see the contrast. 
and flooded on Shabbos. Well, then he's going to be potter. Then he's exempt. Yeah. Why? From everything. Yeah. From all payments. Shim ain Gneva, because if he doesn't have to pay for the stealing of it, which we call that the Karen, the principal, he doesn't have to pay the principal. Why? Because he's exempt because he's Chayv Misa because of Shabbos. There's no halach in the Torah that you have to pay three or four times. It's only halach that says four or five times. So if you knock away the obligation of the principal, so then there's no obligation anymore of the fine. And the obligation will, the principal obligation will fall off if there's, if it was uh, an exemption of come lay where there's a, a more stricter punishment that's coming on him. Okay. The Amar Rabba, Rabba says, Let's say it was stolen before Shabbos. No. And he slaughtered it during a, a, a home invasion. Act of burglary. Machteras oh, isn't. Oh, no, he stole it before. Oh. And now I, I don't know why he's taking it to someone else's house, but for whatever reason, I guess he stole it um, from no one was home, uh, from another uh, a barn. Right. Now he's breaking into someone's house. Machteras means he's digging a tunnel into someone's house. Now the Torah tells us that if someone is breaking into someone's house, he's tunneling mm -hmm. into someone's house, um, he's actually forfeiting his life. Because a person may stand up to kill him, which means that he's going to try to protect himself and he's going to kill the person, which means that he becomes uh, like a raider. And so basically, he's forfeiting his life. Now, this is not a death penalty, but it's like a death penalty. Basically, he's, he, he has he's taken the... Um, the protection of his life is gone. And so therefore, we're going to view it like there's a death penalty here. So if he if he stole it before and then he slaughters it during this home invasion, then he's going to be chayev because he's already chayev for the principal before he breaks into the person's house. Let's see, he stole the animal and he slaughtered it during the home invasion. And we're over there, he's forfeiting his life. We're going to view this like there's a death penalty there. Then he's going to be potter. Because if he doesn't have to pay for the principal, he doesn't have to pay for the fine. We have no rule that the fine comes without the principal. It's only the principal and the fine on top of it. Well, we had two cases that sort of tell me the same halacha. And Utsricha, both cases were necessary. The Yashmin and Shabbos, if you only talk about Shabbos, it says that he's going to be chayev if it was stolen before Shabbos and he slaughters it on Shabbos because the fine has a payment on Shabbos, Mishum, even though there's a death penalty. Mishum di Surya Surayla, because Shabbos, every Shabbos, there's the, you have the same uh, prohibition that comes in. It's a strict prohibition. I think uh, also the Surya Surayla, is that there is no um, uh, limitation on when the, the testimony on this person could come, when the death penalty could come on this person. What's it called? Is that what you call it? Statute of limitation? Where a person, you can only bring them to court in a certain amount of time. So when it comes to Shabbos, you have no such thing. Someone can come and testify that he was Machal Shabbos, that's it. It's always going to come. Whenever the Adim show up, that's when the, it's going to come, it's going to show up. That's when he's going to have the death penalty. Okay, however, Aval Machteres, this is a show. The, the case of Machteres, it's not that I have witnesses afterwards that tell me that you should know that this guy one time tunneled into someone's house and therefore there's a death penalty. No, 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 no. While he's in the tunnel, he's forfeited his life. He steps out, then it's, that whole thing is over. It's not that there's a, a death penalty that's lingering over his head we don't know when it's going to show up. Here, there's, there is no such thing. It's just while he's there that he's forfeited his life. 
So then I would say, I would say that that's not really considered a death penalty. Oh, wow. Well. And the opposite. Yes, mean machteres. And if we would say the machteres, that um, when he breaks into someone's house, he's going to be exempt from payments of monetary monetary payments because of the death penalty. It's not a death penalty, but it's a forfeit of his life that comes along with that. I would say mishum the machtarte zui because the breaking in, that's considered like a warning. He knows what's going to happen. Uh, but on Shabbos, when he needs to be warned, a malay would say that maybe it's not the same thing. I thought over here he was being warned. The Machteras? Yeah. Did they comment on that? That it, I thought the case of Shabbos was that he's being warned, or else there wouldn't be a death penalty. Okay, but Shabbos? Kill a homeless. Yeah. However, let's see. However, Shabbos, which requires forewarning, is a less severe prohibition. And then that, oh, he's being warned, but it requires forewarning. That's what I'm saying. It's less severe. So then I would say that maybe he's not exempt from the payment. Therefore, uh, it's necessary to have both Shabbos and Machteres, which is the tunneling into someone's house, that he would be exempt from a payment if they were both, if the, if the stealing was done together with Shabbos or together with breaking into the house. Okay. Is he allowed to dig on Shabbos? It doesn't have to be that he's digging the mach the machteres. Means he's uh, climbing through a window. That's uh, breaking in yeah. when the owner's there, in the middle of the night. Oh boy! Home invasion. He's not, not going to do it at all. Right. Okay. Amar of Papa. So far, so far, so far, you've been learning that when it comes to the punishment, he doesn't get both punishments. He only gets the more severe one. So far, we've been learning that it's actually the punishment. Yeah, we're going to see soon that it's not necessarily the case. But so far, that's the way we were understanding. If there is a chi of misa, then there's no chi of maman. It's it's on the psak. Okay. However, we'll see soon. It's not so simple. Um, Amar Rav Papa. Rav Papa says, Paisa para genuvalai utvacha b'shambas. Let's say... The cow, he had a cow that was, that, that had stolen, that he had stolen. Cow. But he slaughters it on Shabbos. Chayev, he has to pay for the, um, for the slaughtering, the extra fine. And the reason is because the exemption of such a case of violating Shabbos and having to pay the money as well, that would only exempt from the principal payment. But the principal payment was obligation from before Shabbos. So, because he was chayev for the principal payment before Shabbos. Then he's potter. Let's say he borrowed the cow. So it was in his possession uh, for, with permission. But then he slaughtered it on Shabbos. So then he's going to be exempt. Why? Because the stealing of it also took place on Shabbos. When he slaughtered it, it was when he stole it. Right? Like Shlichas or something. He's using something that wasn't his. 
he just slaughtered an animal that he had borrowed. And so then he's going to be exempt. So why is exempt from payment? Because the, the, the punishment of violating Shabbos is a death penalty. And the punishment for slaughtering it is going to be the four or five times payment. But the problem is, is that the first payment is going to be exempt on, on Shabbos because of this more strict punishment, which is the death penalty. So, um, then he's going to be putter. He usually the knas. Yeah, we're actually referring to the original payment of the principal. The principal payment itself, the value of this animal that was supposed to be repaid, that is exempt when there's a a death penalty. In the knas. And the knas itself would be an obligation. However, because there's no there's no principle, then there's no knas. Okay. So if he had bought it and slaughtered it in the shop, so it's his. This is the one he slaughtered in the shop. So he just gets that penalty. That's, that's the penalty. Just, yeah. just the death penalty. Okay. Now, if he stole, if he bought it and it was stolen, stolen goods, and he gets a discount on it, is that is, does that complicate things? It's, it's not. Um, he knew it was stolen. He doesn't have to pay the four or five times. He wasn't the one that stole it. That's it. As long as he gets the death penalty. Just the death. That's it. Ravacha, the son of Rava, says to Ravashi, What did Rav Papa tell us? You know, Rava is the teacher of Rava and Abaya, who are the teachers of Rav Papa. So Rava already told us that if someone steals a goat, if it's before Shabbos, then there's going to be a payment, right? Even if he slaughters it on Shabbos. If, he's, if he steals it on Shabbos, then there's going to be no payment, right? Um, but Rav Papa is telling us the same story with the cow. So it, uh, Rav Achabri Rav says to Rav, Rav Papa, paras he's coming to tell us that the same halacha applies to a goat, it applies to a cow. That's what he's telling me. Amar lay. He responds back. Ravashi says to Ravacha Breder Rav, no, Rav Papa Shu'ula Asa Lashminan. Rav Papa is teaching you a big halacha here. He's telling you that borrowing has a special status. Like you have to take a look at this. I mean, I could have thought, when did he borrow this animal? He borrowed the animal when he pulled it uh, during the weekday. He had pulled, pulled it out of the the owner's, the the lender's um, property and brought it to and brought it into his property. At that time, he becomes responsible to make sure the animal is fed. What about for Aynas? Is he responsible for then, for Aynas as well? So, I could have thought that at the time that he borrowed it, he's chayev for the Aynas. Aynas means if an accident happens or if it dies or all monetary obligations. I could have thought that, that all of the, the whole value of this animal is now becomes his responsibility right at the time that he borrows it. Now, if that's the case, then the principal obligation to pay it, to pay it back was already at the time when he borrowed it. So when it comes to the slaughtering on Shabbos, the only obligation then is the fine. And we know that a fine comes together with a death penalty. So then he should be chayyot. Comes along uh, Rav Papa and tells me, that even though the obligation to feed the animal started from yesterday when he borrowed it, but the obligation to pay for the animal is only when the accident happens. And that, that happened on Shabbos. It wasn't an accident. It was when he, uh, when he slaughtered it. So in other words, the payment doesn't start from the borrowing. Payment starts from when the, when the accident occurs. Payment of the principle of the animal only when it gets it. yeah 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 a shayal is is responsible for this but that's not our point of view i mean he slaughtered it um the the question is the chi of tashlumen is that chi of tashlumen that obligation to pay is that is that potential 
obligation to pay for the animal already there when he borrows it? Or does it get become created when the accident happens? Ah, so what's the answer? So we we just said now that it's only when the accident happens. And because it happened on Shabbos, yeah. it was slaughtered on Shabbos, so he's gonna be he's gonna be exempt. I just thought of a comedian that's famous for that. It's Jack Benny, where he sticks it up. I remember because I was a little kid when I saw this. The, the guy comes in, points the gun out and says, Your money or your life? Jack Benny said, I have to think of it. Cracks up his <laughs> Right. Yeah. There was Ben Goodman, Jack Ben. Yeah. Uh, so Kamash Milan, Kamash Milan it comes to teach us that the obligation takes place um, from from when it happens. Okay. Amar Rava. Rava says he niach baviyam parashulah. Let's say the father had borrowed a cow and then the father passed away. Now, he had borrowed the cow, let's say, for a month or for a year. <coughs> now, the orphans are using the father's estate. Well, however long he had borrowed it for, they're allowed to continue with that, um, with that, uh, with that item. Here, it's a, a cow. Mesa, let's say the animal dies by accident. Well, they're not obligated to pay for an accident. Why? Because the borrower accepts on himself those extra obligations to pay for it. But they, didn't, they are not the borrower. So they only have to pay as a regular watchman, even though they're allowed to still use it, which is very interesting. What are they? Hashem or Sachar? Yes. Gnev Aveda, they're probably higher. Does it say? Do they have to, if, it's, if they have to pay if it's stolen or lost? I assume yes, right? Hey, Bailey. Good. They're Hashem or Sachar. Only from accidents. Yeah. Very good. So it says, well, the paid would be because they are allowed to use it. They, they get some benefit. Just like a, a paid person gets a benefit. So, to, so that's an extra obligation. So to here, they're allowed to use the item. But that extra responsibility of the borrower himself that he's going to pay back no matter what, even if it's an accident, that uh, they never accepted. Okay. Mesa in Kisvurim shalaviyam hi. Let's say they saw the animal there. They thought it was their father's. They slaughtered it and they ate it. So in that case, Mshalman de Basar Bazal. They pay the cheapest price for, for me. I don't know the calculations here. Uh, every zuz, it says they. Uh, Let's go ask. Does it does it give you the numbers there? Arba donkey, uh, donkey is a six. It says it's been a two thirds of market price. Yeah, so it becomes two thirds of the market price. Very good. Okay. If the father left them. Um, Property. Christ Nechassim means something that would be um, something that could have a lien on it. Okay, so that would be the property. Then Chayavim Lashalim, then they have to pay. Now, what is that last line referring to? Is that referring to when they borrow, when it's borrowed and it died, they don't have to pay for the accident? Or is that referring to the second case where they thought it was their father's and they slaughtered it, that they paid the cheap price? If the father left them property, they have to pay the full price. What's it referring to? They are responsible with the father's estate.
Right. 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 It could be. It could be it's the state. Well, Ikadamasnila Some people say that this last case is talking about the ratio, is talking about when he borrows it and then it dies. That if um, if there's property there, then he has to pay. Because the Masnila Seifa, and something that is talking about when he slaughtered it. And instead of paying the, the two thirds of the, mar- of the market value, he has to pay full price if there was property. Man the Masnila Reisha. In other words, the, um, the obligation to pay back what he borrowed because this property there um, has that, there's like sort of like a lien on that property to pay back the, the, the lender. So Manda Masila Reisha, the one that says that it's talking about when it got uh, when it when it died. So then Kalshkina Seifa. Then for sure if they slaughtered it, they're gonna have to pay back the, the full price. But however, Manda Masila Reish, um the Rapapa. And that would argue with Rapapa. Why? Because Rapapa says that when did they borrow it? They borrowed it. The obligation to to pay back the four or five times. What's going on over here? Um, they don't have to pay for the accident unless there was property there. If there is property there, then they do have to pay for it. If that's the case, then when they slaughter it, then they would also have to pay for it. So you do borrow an account. Borrowing what, account. What is the property? How is the property? No, the, the, um, that's the, the borrower has a property. Ah. And because of that that property exists, then there's a lien on that property to pay back the debts that he has. One of those debts would be that cow that he had borrowed. Now, why, why is the onus on the actor here, like getting like that lowest value of the cow? Is it because of like negligence and being publicized that it was a lent cow? They didn't know that it belonged to this fellow. They thought it was their father's. But if not a fellow, we guess like the lowest value for any. Yeah. I guess you have to brand the cow to put it under some civil courts. If somebody, if somebody dies, their money owed, the creditor has a certain amount of days to come forward. I was wondering, and that, otherwise, they would. Bars no, they they have the the that limitation. They have that they, they don't have. Right. They can come to collect their money whenever. Um, question is why are they getting less than the actual value of what the person gave them? Look, we're considering it like an accident. Mm-hmm. The fact that they slaughtered it, it was they themselves because they didn't know about it. But nevertheless, just because it's an accident doesn't mean that they didn't get a um, a meal and all the meat that they just ate and all of that. So at least that part that they, they have to pay for. But the but you know, that's sort of like the benefit. I guess the may the may bus bazaar would mean the benefit. That's what it would mean, right? So to make this more modern, let's say I borrow a car from a friend. And it, it, it dies. And he says, okay, pay the whole price of this car or just for the benefit that I was receiving. So there's two, there's a, an, any vessel that breaks is called, um, it depends how it broke. If it broke from normal usage, 
Right. Then it's it's called Mesa Mach Mas Malacha. And he when he lent it to you, he knew that there's that look, the cars last a certain amount of time and it just died because there was a uh, you know, four hundred thousand miles on it. So um so it died. But, uh, that that would you would be exempt for. Uh if the if it's there was car. Sorry. If it was just a freak accident, that sometimes this thing uh, gets whatever, that's an accident. Um, so then you would actually have to pay. Whole thing. Yeah. You took it one day, I have to pay. This yeah, if you borrowed it. Don't borrow a car if you don't want to use that. Right. Um, so when you bo a borrower accepts on himself extra responsibility. Yeah. America, we used to think about the rights of the victim and the rights of some certain institution to control. So our focus is on the obligations of the person hey. who caused the problem. Uh -huh. For example, you know, we have all these people today with the show of Tom towards somebody right. the first time. He gets paid out his damages. He could say, I don't care if it's the first time, you know, if we're going to pay me what I lost. But right. he doesn't. Why? Yeah, so one second. So over here, what we're saying is that according to Rav Papa, because the obligation to pay only starts, Rav Papa says, the obligation to pay only starts when the accident happens. So if that's the case, Then, then this property should not have a lien on it and should not affect it should not affect that payment. But since we're saying that the obligation to pay the ex the extra fines and all of that, the obligation to pay starts from when the animal was borrowed. So then the property that the father uh, left to them, the lien is also on that property. So then, and the obligation would go on, on would, would, uh, to pay is on that property, then that means the obligation started from when it was borrowed. And that's not what the way Rav Papa learned. Mandamasila Seifa, the one that says that he has to pay the full price, Avala Reisha Loi, but not on the Reisha. What was the Reisha when he borrowed it? Oh, so the difference here is um, the the question is if when he borrows it, yeah, that's the question, and nothing to do with the slaughtering of it. it. Has to do with does the lien on the property go for a borrowed animal that die, uh, that ends up dying? When does the obligation to pay for that animal start? If the obligation to pay for the animal starts from the borrowing, then there's a lien on the property. If there's an obligation starts only when the accident happens, well, that was after the father passed away. There was never a lien on that property, and then it would be exempt. And that would fit with your papa. Okay. Now we start. Um, we enter into this discussion. Rabbi Yechanan resolved the Mishnah, the contradiction be between the Mishnahists before that in our parak it says that if there's a girl that's raped, she uh, she's deserving of a knas, even if the man cannot um, stay married to her because it's his close relative. And even though, uh, even though there's Karis or possibly Malkus, she's, still, she's deserving of that, that Knas. Uh, however, we have a Mishnah somewhere else that says that she does get Malkus. That, not she. The perpetrator gets Malkus. She's, she's the victim. Uh, the perpetrator gets Malkus. The problem is, is that usually we said that there's no Malkus and there's no if there's if there's Malchus, then there's no fine. How do you resolve the contradiction? But as we said, there's a fine over there. We say that there's Malchus. So Rabbi Yechanan resolved it by saying that there was a in, in our Mishnah there was no warning. In that Mishnah there was warning. They warned the person, and therefore there's going to be Malchus. Rishlakish explained our Mishnah that it was following the opinion of Rabbi Meir, where Rabbi Meir holds that there's a fine uh, together with Malchus. It's not, there's no contradiction. Okay. The Gemara says, Bishlam Rabbi Echelon, Layam Akurish Lakish. We understand why Rabbi Echelon did not want to answer the Mishnah, like Rish Lakish took a Mukum Lakarabonan. He doesn't want to say our Mishnah is just the opinion of Rabbi Meir. 
the rabbis argue with Reb Meir. He doesn't want to say that the Mishnah is just that one opinion. It's not Mishnah Reb Meir. It's not such a big deal. He doesn't want to do that. Ella Rishlakish, my time alone, my camera, Kirab Yechanan. Why doesn't Rishlakish go like Rabbi Yechanan? You can resolve the Mishnah. You could say that it depends if he was warned. So Amal Amalach, Rabbi Yechanan, Rishlakish would tell you, even the Ilu Asrubei Potter, Kili Asrubei Nami Potter. It's not that the punishment is administered that exempts from the payment. It's the type of action that has potential for that punishment that exempts from the payment. So if because he, if, if he would have been warned, he would be exempt, then he's also exempt even if he's not warned. Rish Lakish. And they followed their reasoning. The Chiyasa Rav Dimi Amar, when Rav Dimi came, he said, When you have a case where there's a death penalty, if it would have been done on purpose, but this this uh, this uh, action was done by mistake, or there would have been malchus if it was done on purpose, but this was done by mistake, or there was just no warning, and together with either of those punishments is also a, a monetary obligation. So in that, those cases, Rabbi Yechanan Amrchaya Bishlokeshamer Pater Rabbi Yechanan says that you have to pay. Why? Because there is actually no no death penalty. There is actually no malchus. Bishlokesh says it doesn't matter what there is actually. It's it, the fact that there is potential for it that exempts from the from the monetary payment. Rabbi Yechanan Rabbi Yechanan says that he's obligated to pay the money. The layasubay. There was no warning here. There's no malchus. There's no death penalty. When he's not warned, he's still, still potter. Pasuk says, These two men are fighting and they hit a woman and she has a miscarriage, but she doesn't die. So it says, Anish, Anish, they have to pay, he has to pay for the, the value of the. Um, of the fetus. But if there was an accident, that means if she did die, he would be exempt. My love, Asan Mamish. If there was an accident and she did die, life, he wouldn't have to pay for the fetus. Your Shlakish logic is like this. Was he warned? It wasn't one. So how are you exempting him from the payment of the fetus without him even being warned? It must be that it's not the warning. It's not the, the administering of the, of the punishment, of the death penalty that creates the, the, um, the, 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 the um, exemption of the monetary payment. It's the action uh, it's the action that had potential for such a severe punishment that takes away the monetary payment. Umar says, Lai, no, that's not the case. We're talking about if there was no um, rule of the accident. That means that either she doesn't die. That's one of the possibilities. And that's why he has to pay. Or he wasn't warned. That's the other possibility. We're throwing in another possibility there. And we're saying that the only case where he would actually have to pay for the fetus is if he was warned. If he was warned and there would be a, a, a death penalty, then he wouldn't have to pay for the, um, for the fetus. It could me that those that said this the other way. It wasn't Rish Lakish asking Rabbi Yechanan this question. It was Rabbi, it was Rabbi Yechanan asking Rish Lakish the question. Mm-hmm. Does it not mean that he was warned? And that's why he's exempt from paying because he was warned. So it says, mamish. even if he wasn't warned. But what we mean is, uh, if the woman died, then he's going to be exempt from the payment. When does he have to do the payment? If the, if the woman did not die. Forget about the warning. That doesn't matter. Is, is there any opinion that actually holds that a death penalty that's not able to be administered because the person 
the perpetrator. He he he, uh, he did the action by mistake. So of course there's not going to be any death penalty there. But the action would have been deserving of a death penalty had it been done on purpose. Is there anyone that holds that that would exempt him from a monetary payment? But but we have a brisa that says maka other maka behema. Someone hits a man and someone someone hits an animal. It does not matter if you're walking up the ladder or down the ladder, if you intended to hit the animal or didn't intend to hit the animal. The um, whatever the case is, there's an obligation to pay for that animal. Same to, same thing, exactly the the inverse. Af maka adam lay tachlik by bein b'shegig bein b'meisiv bein muskam l'shein muskam bein derech chividul derech chaliyah l'chayiv mamen ala peitch me mamen. So too, when it comes to a monetary payment, when someone hits a man, there is no difference if there's going to be a death penalty on the man to exempt the monetary payment, or if there is no death penalty on the man, he's still going to be exempt. Just like when it comes to the animal, there's always an obligation. So too, when it comes to hitting a man, there's always going to be no obligation to pay the, the, the damages. Whether he's going up or going down, remember there were differences, what's considered a shy gig if he's on his way up the ladder or down the ladder. Okay. So Rav's question is like this. How could we say that how could Rav Rab- Yechanan say that if there is no death penalty, he's going to have to make the monetary payment. But we have a brisa from Chizkia that says that there's no monetary payment ever on something that could have had a death penalty. Hmm. It's interesting that we ask a question on on Rabbi Yechanan based on Tanit I mean, could have answered this. Uh, well, he holds like another opinion, which we seem to have said. This is like a new opinion that's just coming up here. Ella ki asa Ravan Amar, when Ravan came, he said, Chai v'misa shagin kuli amalei pligi de peturin. Everyone agrees that Chai v'misa is exempt from the monetary payment, whether it was done on purpose or whether it was done by mistake. Ki pligi b'chai v'malka shagin medabar acher. Where is the machlaikis? By Chai v'malkas. If someone uh, um, commits a negative prohibition, and but he does it by mistake. And together with that prohibition, there was also a, a damages that he has to pay. So what's going to be the din? The actual chi of Malkus is not going to be applied because he did it by mistake. So Rabbi Yechanan Rabbi Yechanan says, therefore he has to pay the monetary damages. And... Um, And Rishlakish is going to say Pater. He says, Chayvi Mises, when it comes to a death penalty, Iskush, that had a comparis- comparison to the hitting of the animal. That when you hit the animal, there's a monetary payment no matter what. So too, by a death penalty, there's no monetary payment no matter what. Chayvi Malkus, when it comes to the lashes, La Iskush, you didn't have that comparison or contrast. Rishlakish Amar Pater, Rishlakish says that he's exempt. We have a clear uh, source that links Malchus to Misa. That whatever rules apply to death penalty are going to apply to Malchus. Sure. Yeah. 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 We were learning. No. We we're learning that our Mishnah is going to be the opinion of Rabbi Meir. Why did he not say like Rabbi Yechanan? Because if he would have said like Rabbi Yechanan that our Mishnah was when he wasn't warned, then he would be exempt anyway. Because Rabbi Rish Lakish doesn't require a warning of the actual administration of the death penalty to exempt him. He's, Rish Lakish just says that the action itself exempts him, even if you can't administer that that exempts him from the monetary payment, even if he can't administer the death penalty or the lashes. So where does he get the lashes from? It's a ton of uh, That's only comparison to death. He says, well, lashes are compared to death. Heichen rips a taira. So we have a few sources here. Ramar Abayas here, Russia, 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 Russia. We learn from the word, 
it says Asherhu Russia Resha Lamas, and by Malkus it says in Bin Hakais Russia. Okay, so it says by the death penalty Russia. It says by Malkus Russia. Rav Amrasya Maka Maka. Rav says. Okay, let's leave Rava's answer for tomorrow. Oh, let's leave it right there. Oh, wow. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day.